Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. We have recently learned about a new medical specialty called cardio-oncology, the field of medicine that deals with the complications of cancer treatment on the heart. Chemotherapy, radiation, and other treatments for cancer can cause a new heart problem or make existing heart problems worse. It's such, it's such an important area of concern that there is soon to be a cardio-oncology practice at the Mayo Clinic in Florida, just as there is a similar practice here in Rochester. And joining us in studio today is Dr. Jordan Ray, who is starting the cardio-oncology practice at the Mayo Clinic Florida campus. Welcome to the program. It's nice to meet you, Dr. Ray. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. Thank you for having me. Dr. Ray, nice to have you. And uh, all the way up from Florida. Thanks for coming. Yeah, well, thanks for having nice, warm kind of Isn't cool it beautiful summer here? Yeah. yeah it is wonderful <laughs> so uh, this specialty cardio oncology why now in florida i think it's probably a culmination of a couple of different factors uh, one a mass effect of the number of patients who've actually survived their malignancies after therapy and we've started to recognize that five years down the road they're starting to have complications from a cardiovascular standpoint uh, there's a growing number of cardiologists who have invested interest in the area as kind of matching the, the patient need. And then the bigger aspect of things is we've started to get a lot of recognition from the big societies. So the hematology oncology societies and all of the large cardiovascular societies have all endorsed this as a, a phenomenon that needs to be recognized, have, have put forth money to support research and other ventures towards that. Yeah. So hematology and oncology, they are, those are both groups that treat cancers. Yes, absolutely. Is the problem, and because you're opening it now, is that you are seeing more heart problems related to cancer treatment because people are living longer or the treatments are more toxic than they used to be? I think it's probably a combination of both. Um, as newer agents are coming to the market, we are starting to recognize the importance of screening for cardiovascular disease and have recognized that there is certainly an increase in specific therapies. But I think the other hand of things has been, traditionally that's not been a large focus for providers who are treating cancers. Um, it's I, probably very justified to focus on making sure the malignancy goes away and not necessarily focusing on any of the other adverse events. And so therapies, you know, two or three decades ago, that was the main focus. And now we've recognized that maybe through that process, we've experienced more cardiovascular disease. So it's probably a combination of both. It's a wonderful problem to have. Yeah. When well, they first started treating cancer, the goal was just to keep the people alive. And now there's a population of cancer survivors that now we've got special medical problems. Fairly huge problem, a population. And you uh, had whole body radiation when I you did. were I a, had a child of Hodgkin's lymphoma. This, let's watch his face when I say this. I had chest mantle radiation for a Hodgkin's when I was 19. And so I exactly fit in with what you're talking about. The way that I was treated uh, 30 years ago is not, is not done anymore. And why is that? Uh, actually, it's completely because we've recognized the cardiovascular complications that come from that particular type of radiation therapy that mm -hmm. you receive. Um, and the challenge in that specific type of radiation is that those cardiovascular manifestations are longer term. Mm -hmm. So you survive your cancer and then you see your cardiovascular issues occur as long as 30 or even 40 years later. Mm -hmm. So you could imagine this phenomenon took a long time for us to discover and then change the technique. Tracy, we've got the defibrillator right outside <laughs> no. the door, so don't worry about a thing. You it's going to be okay. It's a great... And you got a cardiologist <laughs> right here. Well, and I would say, I would like to, this would be a different different topic, but um, having cancer patients as patients, we have got a different mindset about what is a problem or a bother. At least that's my, I'm like, well, if the heart starts to go, then we'll deal with that problem when we get to it. Yeah, and <laughs> I, that's actually the perspective and, and concept that really drove me into this field was seeing some of these patients survive some of these monumentous occasions only to be recognized five, six years later for having yet again some more complications. It's also a fairly healthy perspective to have that cardiovascular disease is still the number one killer in the United States. It's still the number one killer of both men and women, um, and it has a worse prognosis than most malignancies. Um, and so that problem is going to be there regardless of cancer. And in fact, in, in women who have survived breast cancer, it is the number one cause of their death uh, long term. So what do people who've gone through cancer treatment or what, what does radiation and chemotherapy do to your heart? Oh, a number of different things. I think focusing on the fact that chemotherapy 
most traditional chemotherapies are medications that are designed to kind of destroy cancer before it destroys you. So the, the effect or pharmacological effect of these medications uh, affects both healthy and non-healthy cells. Uh, and the hope is that it just kills the cancer faster. And so a lot of traditional chemotherapies, what happens is it prevents the heart's ability to replicate. So we like to think that all cells have the ability to multiply and divide, which is true, and some do at different rates. The slower the, the heart replicates, the less likely it has effect from chemotherapy, but it's not absent. And so if, if cardiovascular cells are starting to become affected or die from these processes, then long-term complications like scar formations and things can happen, which really affect the pump function in, in general. So let's talk about breast cancer, continue that discussion, breast cancer in the heart, because that's the most common cancer in women. Their survival rate now is close to 90%. Yeah. So a majority of women are surviving breast cancer. And a recent study showed that women over the age of 45 have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease following uh, breast cancer. And, and why is that? And what problems are you seeing? And what can you do about it? So I think that's probably a combination of a few things. Uh, one, I think, important thing to focus on is the risk factors for developing breast cancer are actually very similar to the risk. There's a lot of overlap with the risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So they so, may have gotten cardiovascular disease anyway? Absolutely. So uh, there is that phenomenon that is recognized. However, there are a couple of good studies that have looked at women who have had breast cancer versus the same women who did not have breast cancer and their similar risk factors. So they're matched between the two groups. And the women who have had breast cancer and undergone cancer treatments have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. So there certainly is a phenomenon from the cancer itself and maybe probably more likely from the therapies that we're giving these patients that increase their risk for cardiovascular disease. And is that both chemotherapy and radiation or is one a bigger culprit than the other? Uh, it's it's going to be both. And the the. the culprit is probably going to be dependent on the dose and frequency of whichever therapy you received. What about proton beam? Uh, can't they now stop the beam so that if they give uh, radiation to the left breast, uh, they can spare the heart? Yeah, I think proton beam is a, is a emerging new technology that's going to probably offer a lot of benefits to these patients. We don't quite have a lot of long-term data for that, but you're absolutely right. The theory behind proton beam therapy is that the 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 proton or the particle we're sending bypasses a lot of structures on its path and it then delivers its energy to a specific targeted area that the radio oncologist has kind of dictated. So if it's passing through the heart, then it's not delivering any energy through that. And then the hope would be that it doesn't cause any long-term damage. And I think that's probably going to be a mainstay. There are other different types of radio techniques that can be used beyond just proton therapy. Uh, proton therapy is still difficult to have to the masses because there are only a few centers in the country that are kind of leading that motion. So uh, traditional radio te techniques where you have specific type of breath holding or specific type of CT guided radio techniques can kind of push the heart out of the field of radiation and reduce it. Um, and how, when do you like to see these patients and how long do you follow them after their cancer treatment? It's a very good question, and there's not a great straightforward answer for that, unfortunately, mostly because we don't have a lot of good long-term evidence to support any of our concepts. I personally really want to see patients who are receiving therapies, and there's a concern that there might need to be a change for therapy based on a cardiovascular outcome, because I think that plays the largest impact and role in that patient right then and there. Uh, but I certainly like seeing patients who have received therapies and are now having new symptoms and an ability to exert themselves. I can't climb a flight of stairs or I used to be an avid exerciser and now I can't do anything that I used to do. Those are kind of heralding signs that cardiovascular disease has started. Um, and if you are somebody who has experienced chemo or radiation for some reason, seeing a cardio-oncologist to determine whether or not that falls in the purview of a complication from chemo and radiation or just a traditional standard cardiovascular disease. All right, Dr. Jordan Rafe. Now, fortunately, people with cancer are living longer after diagnosis and treatment, but the treatment can cause complications later on, including heart disease. Cardio-oncologists are specialists in preventing heart problems after cancer treatment or catching them as early as possible. There is soon to be a new division of cardio-oncology at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. Director, Dr. Jordan Ray. Dr. Ray, thanks so much for being with us. I appreciate you guys having me here.